So it's my privilege to introduce um, uh, our next and first topic, which is the International Agency for Research on Cancer's monograph overview. To lead us and navigate us through this discussion, please join me in welcoming Dr. Paul Demers, who is the director of the Occupational Cancer Research Center, as well as the senior scientist with Ontario Health and professor with the Occupational and Environmental Health Division of the University of Toronto's Dalilana School of Public Health. Paul is internationally recognized for his expertise on the health effects of workplace exposures and has sat on many expert panels, including the IARC working groups that evaluated the carcinogens such as dust and fibers, firefighting, and formaldehyde. He has published over 120 peer-reviewed scientific papers, and his work has been cited over 6,000 times. From 2007 to 2011, he served as the Editor-in-Chief of Environmental and Molecular Mutagenesis. He currently serves on the editorial boards of Environmental and Molecular Mutagenesis, Mutation Research, Food and Chemical Toxicology. His work has been recognized by scientific leadership, and he has received research excellence awards from the Environmental Mutagenesis and Genomics Society, the Deputy Minister of Health of the Government of Canada, and the Governor General of Canada. Please join me in welcoming a very warm a round of applause, Dr. Paul Demers. Well, thanks very much for inviting me here, and I'm very happy to be here. Uh, one thing I will mention, though, right off from the bat is that I, people might think I have a rare name, but there's actually two Paul Demers, and one of them does, uh, also does cancer research in Canada. So I'm not an expert in immunogenesis. I'm an epidemiologist, so, uh, um, but uh, that's why I often try to use my middle initial when I uh, publish so that it will differentiate me. Uh, but I do have done a lot of work on, on firefighting, and uh, so I'm very happy to be here today. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of, of IARC's uh, process, uh, but just kind of a light overview, but you're going to be hearing bits and pieces, I think, from uh, many different uh, members of the IARC working group that uh, participated in the meeting in June and uh, contributed to that evaluation. So everybody brought their own expertise to the table. Um, and what I'll start off with, well, I should mention first off that really it's mesothelioma and bladder cancer that really, uh, you know, made the push things over the edge with, uh, with, with making IARC, uh, uh, evalu the IARC evaluation go to group one, which is carcinogenic to humans. But I'll talk a lot more about that as we go along. First, I'll say a few things about uh, IARC. It's actually a specialized agency of uh, the United Nations attached to the World Health Organization. And it differs from uh, some other parts of the United Nations in that it's actually funded by um, a group of countries, and the United States has always been one of those countries, as well as Canada, Western Europe, uh, Japan and Australia and some others. And gradually that number of countries that support the work of the IARC uh, has gone beyond just uh, being uh, the high income countries of the world to include many different countries. So uh, it's a very uh, helpful thing to get to have this kind of standalone agency. The, um, the 50 you see there is because IARC, which was uh, created actually about 55 years ago, shortly after it was created, started what's called the Monograph Program, uh, which is an odd name, uh, but it's because every time the uh, a group is, meets at IARC to evaluate the carcinogenicity, they produce a monograph, which if you go to a library is a book that can be anywhere from an inch to two inches thick. Uh, so that's the kind of summation of the actual uh, work that goes on uh, whenever the, a working group is convened in order to evaluate things. The, uh, the, the um, I guess I'll just move on, I'm conscious of time here. You're going to hear me mention uh, quite a few times here um, IARC working groups. And IARC convenes working groups who are a group of uh, people who have both expertise in the topic that's being evaluated, but also don't have any conflicts of interest. 
uh, and we have to formally declare that we don't have conflicts of interest, that we have not received uh, pay from any parties uh, that are uh, associated or would make money or have financial interests associated with that, uh, or that we could be perceived as having a conflict. So uh, it is a very carefully selected group, uh, but it's also very well named as a working group. Uh, the working groups are put together about a year prior to uh, an evaluation, and we start working from that very period. And these are you're not paid to do this work. It's simply added on to your regular work responsibilities. So working group, I think, is a very apt name, and it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, dedication to participate in these things. So it is, um, it is something that I'm really very proud to be associated with. What you see here are the four different categories uh, that IARC places its uh, uh, different things that are referred to it uh, into. Uh, you see group one, which is definitely carcinogenic or carcinogenic to humans, uh, probably carcinogenic, which is group 2A, and possibly carcinogenic 2B, and then inadequate evidence. Now, people, you know, critics of the IARC process kind of act as though everything that's sent to IARC uh, is classified as being carcinogenic, and that's really not true, I'll tell you. Um, IARC uh, receives a lot of things that are recommended for it to review. All the things that are recommended to it are things that we have some reason to believe are associated with cancer. It's not like we're reviewing table salt uh, or things like that. These are things that people are very concerned about. So in order to even get recommended to IARC, things have to meet a certain standard. Then we convene. Uh, advisory groups that review uh, and select which things to prioritize for uh, evaluation. So it goes through a number of steps to make sure that it's something that's worth evaluating. And even then, 50% of the things that come to IARC are put into this group three. That is, there's inadequate in, uh, data there to make them or classify them as carcinogenic. Uh, and that's important to remember. This is not an easy pushover group to review things. Another 30% uh, go into the possible. And it's only the 20% uh, that have the highest level of evidence that get into those top two categories. And less than one out of eight things that are sent to IARC uh, actually get classified as carcinogenic to humans. Let's see. Okay. And um, first, time that IARC reviewed firefighting was back in 2007, uh, and I had the privilege of being a member of that uh, working group as well, and it, uh, it was a very, very interesting meeting where we also considered uh, shift work and painting, which is another, uh, another occupation at high risk for uh, cancer. Uh, so there was a very big agenda there, uh, but uh, one of the things I'll say is that it was very clear to the working group that firefighters are exposed to a number of carcinogenic agents. Um, and we use the word agents because we consider a wide variety of things, not just chemicals, but radiation and dusts and fibers, uh, things like shift work, which uh, are another thing uh, that was being considered there, but is also, we now know, an important issue for firefighters who have to be, uh, provide 24-hour protection. So uh, at that uh, meeting, there was a recognition that firefighters are exposed to uh, many carcinogens, but that um, at that time, there weren't enough good studies that really we found a consistent uh, picture, enough to say that, uh, that it was definitely carcinogenic to humans. And that's why it was uh, eventually classified into the uh, 2B or possibly carcinogenic category. So that was about 15, 16 years ago now. And we had, at that point, uh, another meeting, one of these advisory group meetings, and I, again, uh, had the privilege of being uh, part of that group that looked to see what things really deserved reevaluation or what new things we should be looking at. So literally hundreds of things are referred to this uh, advisory group to look at, and uh, firefighting, you'll see, actually got classified as being a high priority for reevaluation. 
And what changed during that period was that there were a lot more studies being published, a lot more research being done. And I'll talk about a few of those studies, but just a few. Uh, but it really there was one of the values of IR evaluations is that it brings broad attention to an issue and a lot of new studies were, were uh, completed in that time period between when that first IARC evaluation was. And I just have four examples here of those kinds of studies that were being looked at. Um, these are four epidemiologic studies and I am an epidemiologist so I'll focus a bit more on those but you'll hear more about this a little later from some of my uh, co-members of the working group. But these are just down there as examples because what we were seeing in, those, in that period after the last evaluation is a number of new studies that were large that included a wider variety of firefighters were being done in a wider variety of different countries. Uh, um, there are some studies here that had better measures of uh, firefighting exposure, uh, which is something that is a key piece that we use for the evidence. The early studies really uh, were kind of limited to uh, only really having uh, how many years of service people had, but not really looking as closely at what kind of, uh, how many fire incidents that people have been uh, in and other types of factors. Um, these, some of these uh, studies here were also included volunteer firefighters, which weren't part of the early studies, and uh, women firefighters who were often not part of the earlier studies either. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of different uh, important uh, gaps that these studies began to fill. going to take a look at time here to make sure I don't, everybody's been very good, so I don't want to push us behind time. Uh, so my eyes are actually not very good. I can't, I can only read this, but I can't actually see things uh, too far in the distance without my glasses, in which case I can't read. Um, so that next firefighter evaluation was conducted just this last summer, as you've already heard. Um, at that point, there was a working group that was convened uh, with 25 experts from a number of different countries. Uh, I have to say it's a bit of a reunion for us uh, here uh, today. A number of different members of the group are, are here, um, here in the room attending this meeting in person, which is great uh, to see. Uh, the, um, One thing I need to mention about the IARC working groups is we're separated into a number of kind of subgroups or subcommittees for our evaluation. Uh, one of those uh, committees focuses in on the uh, exposure data, that is, what, how do we characterize, in this case, uh, fire smoke, but also uh, other things that firefighters experience, such as shift work, uh, exposure to diesel exhaust from uh, uh, firefighting equipment and other factors like that. So that group, you, you know, reviews a kind of a wide variety of different evidence. Uh, in the case of this group, there was also uh, a lot of attention paid to how well the different uh, epidemiologic studies, that is studies of cancer in humans, uh, actually evaluated firefighter exposures. So uh, a lot of work being done by that group. Um, there is a, uh, the cancer in humans group, which is really an, an epidemiology group looking at uh, those kinds of studies, um, and there were many different studies to look at, many more than there were in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, evaluation. And then there's also what we call uh, a mechanistic study, uh, and we have several members from all three committees uh, here today. The mechanistic study has a very important role that's really grown in importance over time uh, as part of these evaluations that really looks at um, how we measure uh, uh, what increases the risk of cancer. So it's not waiting for cancer to occur, but actually doing studies to see if there's a carcinogenic impact on people. Uh, and so that's a very important part of the evaluation right now, and you'll hear more about that in a bit. Now, the, I mentioned that there were many new studies available that were studies of cancer in humans, but there were also many more studies that were available that looked at exposure among firefighters. And 
you know, not just um, uh, career fighters working for municipalities, but really kind of a wide variety of different firefighting circumstances, including uh, very important things like uh, fighting wildfires. Uh, so a lot of different evidence was uh, reviewed there. There were many new mechanistic studies and uh, that review actually led to the classification that uh, of the 10 different kind of recognized mechanisms that cancer is caused, that five of those operate uh, in firefighters uh, and were associated either with uh, particular firefighting activities or with uh, overall employment as a firefighter. And you'll hear uh, more about uh, that kind of work as it goes on. But that played a very important role as well in this evaluation. <coughs> and then last, it's the different cancer sites. And we reviewed a wide variety of cancer sites and many uh, different types of cancers have been observed in one or more uh, firefighting studies. Um, I think I mentioned before it's a tough uh, process. The two that had the strongest uh, evidence in this case were uh, mesothelioma and bladder cancer and those uh, were, were uh, classified as uh, definitely associated with firefighting. Uh, five other sites had a consistent pattern of increased risk but had other uh, issues that um, uh, had the committee fall short of putting them in that definite category. But this just points to the, uh, the need for continuing, uh, continuing research in this area uh, to further identify all the sites that are associated with an increased risk of, uh, of cancer in firefighters. And with that, I think I'm about on time or am I? Okay. Great. So I'm going to let uh, Alberto take over again, and we're going to have a panel. So I'm going to go sit down over there. Thank you very much.